Hey guys, this is DFD, aka Dark Frozen Deaths, back with some more Kamihime Project. Now, this is the third video to those guides, basically, where I'm going to end up talking about the uh, Dolans, or pretty much the Summons. Now, they also make up a pretty huge chunk of your power, especially with the main and, and um, the main and friend ad ad Dolan effects, but that's the whole thing with those. First and foremost, I don't know if this is fully true, because you probably see it on the screen with the bold red letters right here, but when it comes to actually putting in a Dolans of the same element as your Kamihime, then the Eidolon will have 10% more stats. Now, what I mean is that Say the Adolan has a thousand attack and a hundred HP that they'll give to or to your um, Thunder Kamihime, and they match the element. Then that Adolan will give instead a hundred and ten HP and a and a thousand and one hundred attack. But if you have, say, a Fire Kamihime and a Thunder Kamihime, but the Adolan's Thunder, the Fire one still gets the normal one hundred HP. The Thunder one gets the 110. That's what I mean by that. That Dolan becomes 10% stronger for them. For whoever matches the element. Now, in some, in the case of some Adolans, that's actually recommended. But, we'll get to that later. But I don't know if this has been implemented on the Nataku side. It's definitely on the DMM one. And it has been for months. But, that's the whole thing with that one. It's helpful, but... I can't necessarily say it's needed. The only time you really need to worry about matching element is the weapon skills and then um, the special addons that I'll come across later. Because there's going to be a few event ones too that we'll have to deal with that one. But, anyways, getting on to the main effects. Now, naturally, the element is going to come in play. But at the same time, the rarity kind of does too. Like it, it mentions right off the bat that the with the rarity, when it comes to SSR, especially the gacha ones, they'll definitely hit the thirty to forty percent range. Some like if it's gacha ones, it starts off at that. But that's the whole thing. It's a huge chunk of your power. When you really look at it. Especially if it's something like elemental attack instead of character attack. Now, the ones that tend to have elemental attack will definitely be the ones to go for. Because it's a very, very rare instance where elemental attack will not help you. Especially if it's a huge increase. Say, say like Rudra, who's a water one. She gives like, like 100% elemental attack. There's no... I don't one that will give you more attack power than her. I'm, I can say that right now. It might change later down the line, but I can say that right now. But that's the whole thing. Elemental attack is definitely better than character, and I've said it in quite a few videos before, including the weapon one. But how do you tell what's elemental and how you tell what's character? If it's character attack, where it'll just increase their attack power then it'll say that in the description. If it's elemental, it'll say something like fire attack or wind attack. If it's character attack, it'll say fire character attack or wing character attack. Now you see where I'm getting at with that. Character attack, it just increases the, the attack stat. Elemental will increase the actual damage. So, in the case of character attack, I used this example before. 10% character attack will sit up and do something like take... 10,000 attack and make it 11,000. Something like elemental attack will sit up and take that that the damage from the 10,000 attack and make it 10% more elemental damage, as in 10% more damage period point blank. So say if you're using 10,000 attack and deal 20,000 damage, but you sit up and take 11,000 attack and deal 22,000 damage, then you've got an increase of 20%. But, I mean, you got an increase of um, 10%, basically, off of that. But, say, you have something like 
that 10,000 damage dealing 25,000, I mean that 10,000 attack doing that 25,000 damage, then the elemental attack of like 20% will slip and take 20% of that 25,000 damage and increase it higher. Nine times that, like that's not the exact formula, but given the actual formula, which I will eventually post at some point, I just don't know if it's going to be this video, but... Looking at the actual formula, elemental attack definitely benefits you way, way better. If you want character attack increases, go for the assault weapons on the, on your weapon grid. But, that's the whole thing. And, it's recommended to pretty much try and get the elemental attack, but if you can't, then go for character attack. Because it, it doesn't always pop up on your friend list. Because I've noticed that a few times, where... Like in the previous event, I kept going after Belial because she was a very strong one, but if I couldn't get her, I went after Fafnir. If I couldn't get her, I tried to go after a, another one on a different list. And there's a few cases where I couldn't get any of them, so I had to settle for getting somebody like Kasuga or Krom Kruak, who, who only gives like character attack. Or um, definitely Ifrit, because Ifrit gives more than they do, and a burst effect as well. But... Character attack is the second priority, elemental attack is the first. Now, if you do get stuck with the character attack, there's usually set secondary effects, so like some sad effect that will also give, like HP increase, or ability damage increase, or burst increase. Now, here's the thing. It's still dependent on the situation. Now, in most cases, you'll probably want the... um. The character attack and the HP increase if you have to go for character attack. And like I mentioned, Kron Kruok and Cthulhu can do that for the fire teams. They're 20% um, HP and 40% character attack when they're maxed out. Now, those are just all around good for any situation. Because you, you still deal more damage, just not as much as you would want. But at the same time, you have more HP so you can survive better. And that's definitely good for the fire teams. But, um... That's the whole thing. It's just no situations, no nothing, just raw increase. At the same time, too, there's still ability damage increase, which is less than the HP one, but you'll still use it. You'll still use it a nice amount. Reason because of that is that some abilities do hit pretty hard, and then ninety percent of the debuff abilities deal damage anyway, so you're just doing the extra damage on top of it. That's why I say ability damage is also pretty good. Especially in the long fights when your abilities come off a of cooldown. But that's the whole thing with that. I can't say burst is very good unless you're in burst time because of the fact that uh, naturally you have to be pulling off burst to do it. But the thing is, this is supposed to be the burst chain damage increase. Meaning, not the damage you deal from each individual burst, but the damage you deal from the after effect, from doing two or more. So, unless you're doing two or more bursts, you're not really going to get the effect of this type of add on anyways, when it comes to burst damage increase. So, say for instance, you have... You do a full burst where it's got five characters dealing 50,000 damage. None of them get a damage increase. But the after effect at the end that's dealing like maybe 2,500, I mean 250,000 damage, that will suddenly deal like, say, 20% or 30% more damage. So that's where it will get the, the benefit and effect and deal like over 3,000 or something like that. I mean, over 300,000 instead of the 250,000. That's where it comes in handy. But other than that, you can't really make much use of it. So if it's burst time, go for it. But if not... Eh, it's too situational. Now, n there's also um, some special add-ons that they have too. And I'll get to a few of them a little bit later because I'm kind of sick of seeing them set as leaders. But the fact is, they hand you out one that's like, this one has no situations whatsoever. You have SR Diablos. She gives you HP and attack to everybody, period. She's listed as darkness, but she gives you HP and attack to everyone. Quite frankly, use her as your main if you have nothing else that's better. That even includes the Wilms because they're not better. I will get to that later. There's like maybe one rare instance where you might need to use the Wilms, but that's it. 
but in the case of Diablos, chances are she's going to be better off, period. Now, there's also Meng Huo, who, um, and it says win, but that's wrong. I know for a fact she's Thunder, but she's a very good one to have just if, if you're starting out, because damage output won't be too too much of a thing to worry about if you're like a completely fresh player or a player that can't even really clear expert level um, content from um, the events, then Ming Huo is going to be good for you because she'll increase your HP. Heck, it's even suggested that until rank 50, you can she might be worth it. After rank 50, don't even try to use her as a main. But she'll increase your HP. And by a lot, too. Just starting off is, I think, 20%. And then it goes up to 40%. That's a huge chunk. If you have two of her, that means you have 80%. You've almost doubled your HP. That actually is quite impressive. It's just the fact that your damage output will suffer because of it. So unless you're absolutely sure you can out-tank a fight, that's a bad idea. But eventually we'll get um, an SSR version of Diablos who ends up being Phantom Element. We'll end up getting a Vlad Tepes who will end up being Phantom Element. We have a Lilm that's Phantom Element. The thing with that is the fact that we don't really have too much use for the Phantom Elements right now because majority don't want you to split apart your team's elemental setup and that really hampers your damage. Unless they come up with something like I heard they're making Phantom Weapons for the DMM side. If they do something like make the Phantom Weapons give a boost to every single element, then that will, have, that will help a great amount and then you can start doing mixed element teams, but... But the way this game is set up and how you get the b best damage, you're better off focusing on one element for that team. So Phantoms are pretty much out. And that's the other reason why Wilms are pretty much out too for a main setup. Doesn't mean you can't use them as a sub, and I'll get to that later. But as a main setup, you're splitting up your elemental composition and it gets horrible. It really does. Not to mention, you really want everybody to get boosts from weapons and whatnot. You gotta split the elements between the weapons, and well, you're better off just having a grid for all of them. Because let's face it, would you rather have a grid where everybody gets, say, mm, like, everybody gets 10 assault and then, like, 2 HP because of dual weapons? Or would you rather have a grid where it's, like, split between your elements and then everybody's getting, like, maybe 2 assault weapons? Like, that's the whole thing. But in the case of the, um... In the case of the Willems... The Phantom Willems actually is the best one of the seven to use, but only if you have no other choice. Because they might actually be better than, than Diablos, but I still prefer you go for her, because if you're that early in the game, you want the HP and the attack. But... The whole thing is... Try not to set Loams as your main. I cannot stress it enough. Because they're very there really is some high ranked players that just do not need to use that. It looks tempting to get that 70% or 90% attack, but it's character attack. So you're nearly very nearly doubling your attack power, but for up to three characters in your front line. Because keep in mind you have to have them on your front line. Put them in your Putting them as your subs that come in after somebody dies will not work. I wish it did. It will give them a hell of a lot more worth. But it doesn't work. So therefore, the looms are not... They're not needed. But the thing is, though, if you do have to use them, you're going to have to divide your elements pretty, pretty much. So to kind of make up for it, try to get buffers or um, debuffers as your, your other two off element. And maybe they'll actually have some use, but... It's very, very rare. Trust me on that one. But anyways, I've been talking about main Adolin Sue, and there's some very good ones too that have some effects. Like, I know there's a, been one that we had before called Tiamat, and she gives elemental attack, and also gives a double, com double attack boost. So it's like, she'll up your combo rate and up your damage output. That's very good. And her summon effect's very good too. So she's just, she's just an all-around monster because her stats are high as well. But that's the whole thing. Like, some of them are definitely better than others. I mentioned one of the best ones to go for for water. 
But in the case of, um, and I have to cover this last thing about Senum as a weed, too. The case of the, um, elemental, um, Adolin, some of them do come with an ability where it's reducing the damage you take from a certain element as well. Those are usually geared towards a weak element. As in, like, Jack Frost, she gives you a character attack increase and then fire resistance up. That's a 10% damage reduction from fire enemies. They're good against those enemies. But that's it. And they're not the only ones to give an elemental damage reduction too. Some of the aura um, add-ons actually do it. And they may help. But I wouldn't really go out your way to get them. But that's the whole thing. You, you could use it if it's given attack and the elemental damage reduction. But that's the only time they really shine. So you might want to back up just in case. I mean, they're still good to use even if you aren't having a backup, but that's that's the whole thing. They shine the most when you do something like that. I, of course, use Jack Frost whenever I have my water team going into some fire content, so. But when it comes to just normal, everyday crap, then I'll probably have my water team sit up and use somebody like um, Tiamat. In fact, Tiamat probably would, should be your, your um, main if you use using water anyways, compared to Jack Frost. But... That's just me. Now, this has been taking a while to get to, but the support effects. And I also have to mention, too, this is another reason why you might want to pay attention to who, who you get to pick up on your friend list. Which is why I like Fafnir so much. But, the support effects are pretty much, when you summon an Adolin, every last one of them will deal damage. That's a given. Every last one deals damage. No, 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 no. I take that back. There's one group that doesn't do damage, and that's the SSR Dragoons. I don't think they do damage. The other ones probably will. I'm not fully sure on that. But I know for a fact that the SSR Dragoons don't. They come in and just have a summon effect. And they just give you a buff. But that's the whole thing. The majority of them will just do damage. The damage is crap. I will say that right now. The damage is crap. The only times you will probably benefit from the damage is when you are a very weaker player and you, like, say you just started out, you just re-rolled for your, your characters and whatnot, but you haven't leveled them. You're probably having that done ones that will do more damage than them. I'm not kidding. But that's the only time the add ones are helpful. When you're, like, at least rank 20, the damage starts looking minuscule to what you can probably do. I'm not even kidding on that. But... It's a nice little thing to help, because I've used it a few times to send an enemy into a certain mode, because I wanted them to go into raging, and they ha just barely missed it, but the Adolin's calling out actually pushed them into raging. But that's the only time you're really going to use a sub-effect for that. Now, the real reason why you want to use a sub-effect is for the different type of effects it'll have. Some can do debuffs, that's why one like Vine is very good, because she can defense debuff. There's buffs that they can do, there's some special effects where, like, in Tiamat's case, you'll put a barrier around your team where you where you take up to 750 damage for free. You just don't lose any HP off of that. There's some that'll give you, like, healing, like, I know, um... I'm trying to think of her name, Yudrasil, Yid that's her name. She'll put a regen on your party, and they'll recover HP every single turn for a few turns. There's some to up your combo rate. There's some that will lower the enemy's combo rate. There's some that reduce raging meters. Some that increase the duration of stun. There's like a multitude of different stuff. Try to pick the ones that best help your situation. The ones that will definitely help you out the most is the ones that give you the buffs, which is the elemental buffs and the um, attack buffs. This is where the Wilm shine. This is also where the dragoons, whether they're SR or SSR, shine. This is why you don't set them as main, but set them as sub. The Willems will give you an elemental buff towards their element. So will the Dragoons. In the case of the Phantom Willem, she gives you an attack power buff for just everybody. So honestly, having a Phantom Willem and an elemental Willem will definitely help you out in your subs. But that's the whole thing. They will give you an attack power buff. What makes a Dragoon stand out a little bit more is the fact that they'll also give you a defensive buff towards the element that you're strong against. So this also plays into the whole Jack Frost thing. It's like, 
You can have Jack Frost as a lead, have the Water um, Dragoon as a um, sub. You're suddenly t taking less fire damage and dealing more water damage on top of that. So that's where you got to plan your support. And your support can help you out. It really does. Like, for instance, like I said, the elemental defense thing, Kiyuki and um, Rahab, they're very good towards thunder enemies because it'll reduce the thunder damage you take for a few turns when you call them out. Ixium can increase your thunder damage you deal, so your thunder team benefits from that. That's why I still have Ixium on mine, I do believe. But at the same time, too, you may or may not need them, so you might want to have options. But the ones that definitely buff you are the ones that debuff enemies. They tend to be the best ones, especially if it has anything to do with attack or defense power. And then you may want some in some situations, like an enemy that hits you with a lot of status effects. Come bring out Behemoth, and she'll remove one of them when you call her out. The only thing is, though, there's a certain amount of turns that they... They take in order to sip and be able to get called out. And the only two ways to speed that up is for your, your friend one and your um, main one. Because your friend one can do it out the gate if they actually are your friend. If you pick one that isn't your friend, you don't get to summon them out the gate. That's why I like the um, friend um, Fafnir's. Because when I was doing the win, win union raid event, I used to pick a lot of Fafnir's if I couldn't pick um, Belial because of obvious reasons. But Fafnir... Increases your elemental attack, and then on top of that, she gives you an def attack and defense buff when you summon her, so she's really spiking my damage output. But at the same time, too, you may or may not have to worry about it too much, but they are practically extra abilities. Your main one can do it, and your subs can do it. So can the friend one. The only difference that set stands out the friend and the main ones is their additional effect where you set them as that. Now... Last thing I need to look at, too, before we even start talking about some of the add-ons you might want to look out for. Eventually, eventually, we will be able to, um, like, we can strengthen the, the add and all that, like, weapons, but eventually we'll probably be able to trade them off for some stuff. This is why you want to hold on to a lot of the um, higher rarity ones. Even if you don't need them, try to go out your way to get them if you can. Because you'll be able to trade them for stuff and then eventually get other replacement add-ons. And that's where this upcoming thing is about to step and come into play. That's why I'm holding on to an extra copy of Huang Wong. That's why I'm trying to hold on to Ixian even if I'm not going to end up using her. That's the whole thing with that one. And this is where it comes into play a little bit, because there's going to be a shop you can trade for some of these gotcha add-ons, for a fact. I don't know if you can trade for event ones, I've heard you could. But, yeah. But the Dragoons. Oh, boy, the Dragoons. Now, the thing with the Dragoons is the fact that they're all for different elements. So, you may want to aim for the one with the main element towards your team. Like, I have a... My light team's by far the strongest team I've got. I'll go for the, um... The light um, dragoon. But setting him as a lead, I wouldn't recommend it really. It just increases the recovery amount you get from healing abilities and stuff. But the sub things definitely help out a lot. From what I heard, it's an elemental attack power increase by 50%. And I think the resistance is somewhere around 30%. I don't remember that much. But when you start building them up and getting them stronger, that is a huge damage increase. They are definitely worth it. And their stats are pretty high. 3,000 attack power when you get them to level 100? That is insane. Like, no one else really comes close from what I've seen. But, um, other ones that may or may not help. Like, Ouroboros and, um, Echidna. They're dual element. So they increase the element of two. There's others that will eventually do it as well. I think, um... I think um, Fafnir does it. I know for a fact that um, Behemoth and um, Behemoth and Taka Mikazuchi, I don't know how to pronounce that, they do it towards multiple elements as well. They can help out, especially if you got multiple element builds, like say, like for instance, one of the recent pool videos, I've gotten the last copy of a kid and I need to get her to level 100. She gives a 60% elemental attack power increase towards my fire elements and my darkness ones. She was a big help in her last event. That's one of the reasons why you might want to go for the dual element ones. 
but again, that's if you really have nothing else to really do for. I don't think you can trade for them, but who knows. Now, we have these ones too, where they give attack power and HP. Pretty strong, if you can get them higher up. But, that's for the gacha ones. The event ones don't seem all that great, unless they have a good um, sub-effect, like Jorgermonger, who is, um, when you get a level 100, I think it's 40% attack, character attack, and then 20% HP, and then she reduces the enemy's attack power. And by the way, these buffs and debuffs go in their own frame too, so it's not A, B, or C, it's just like a summon or burst one or something like that. Afrid is definitely a good one, because she can increase the character attack, and by a large amount too, I think it's up to 70%. She increases burst streak, so this is good for burst time, maybe not normally, but she's got a um, summon effect where it's a massive attack power increase, but it's for one turn. I think it is um, 30%. Very good. Very, very good. <coughs> Excuse me. I had to cough for that one, but um, I've been talking for a while. But the thing is, some of the ones you don't want as subs, probably Fenrir. She increases ability damage, but you don't have to go out of your way for it. You probably don't want... um. The ones that cause some weak little status effects like um, Jabberwock or his poison. Now, the ones that cause some stuff like Dizzy or Blind can definitely help you. Because that affects enemy turns. Especially Blind because it won't sip and ruin the turn count if you're trying to prepare for it. Like, say you put up the defensive ability of Joan. And then Dizzy activates. You've just wasted it. But, yeah, Dizzy and Blind can help you. Honestly. Blind helps you way more than Dizzy. But, um, that's another one to look out for. Slefnir is actually good because she can increase your burst gauge and that you gain for that turn. And that's why, um, again, Takamaki, whoever she is, she's another good one too because she increases, she outright increases the gauge by 15%. As in 15 points towards your burst gauge. That's very good. These are the ones that you probably re-rolled for if you're smart. And those are the elemental addons that will give you a massive, massive increase. We don't have the light and darkness ones. I don't think they're coming for a while. But we do have the fire, wind, water, and thunder ones. These ones have no special conditions. They are just a raw increase. And they are very, very powerful. Some of them even have powerful effects as well. The wind one, defense down against enemies. The fire one, attack power increase. The water one, defense power increase. The thunder one, resistance against status effects. They're, they have some strong effects and they're worth it. They are worth it. This is one of the reasons why you re-roll. And if you're too far in the game like I am, unfortunately you're probably going to be better off throwing the gotcha at it. But, that's the thing. These guys are very, very powerful. When you see one, go for it. If you get one, you're very, you are very fortunate. And not to mention, they're, they're able to go even higher than 100%. They go up to 120. And I think the, um, I think the other ones do that as well. But, I'm not fully sure on that, but here's the thing. reason why I haven't mentioned the light or the darkness one, and there's eventually going to be one for wind and thunder, they're probably going to introduce even more. That thunder one even almost looks like Sabo. But, um, here's the thing with these ones. The light, the darkness, the future wind, and the future thunder ones. And the wind and the thunder ones can even go even higher. But you need to have matching elements for the Adolans in your sub slots in order to get more of a benefit from the main one. So, for instance, in the case of the darkness one, Anubis, she doesn't give the full 100. She gives like maybe 80. And then for each additional one you put in, she'll give more. Like, say, 
I have Anubis, but nobody else matches. She gives 80%, but if I sit up and suddenly stick a kidna in the sub slot, she'll start giving even more. That's where you want to start getting matching elements for your Adolans. And since you're going to end up working with your, your teams for a matching element anyways, it will naturally build upon itself. So, there you go. We're going to have an event Adolan pretty soon. I think Ilyunkas is the first one to do it. I'll see when I go further down. But, um... Eventually, we'll get a bit of Dolan's that'll do the same type of thing, where it's like, okay, 50% attack power. But you gotta have matching water element, or matching fire element, or something like that. Diablos. This one, SSR Diablos, we don't have her for a long time, but she works just like the Willem, so I'll say it anyways right now. You need three or more different elements in your Kamihime. And in the front five, not the sub two slots, the front five. To get her effect. From what I'm hearing. It's a special attack buff for her. Which can really spike your damage output. But unfortunately we don't have really too many ways. Even by the time she comes out. To really utilize that to its fullest. So. Honestly you try to avoid using her. You try to avoid using the Wilms. That's all I'm going to say for this. Just use the Wilms as a sub slot. I don't know what um, Diablo does for his summon ability. But that's the whole thing. It's I don't know. But she does increase HP on top of that, so that's actually not too bad. But, um, event add-ons. Now, here's the thing with these. If they come from a raid event, we'll eventually get another chance to get them. If they come from an admin event, we'll also get another chance, but it'll be much easier. Because the raid ones, I think we'll have to end up trading for, and it's a very, very hard to get item at that point. They may, may be in a special event gotcha that we'll set up and get event, eventually, where it's like raid event Kamihime will um, be able to gotcha for them. And maybe one of these other ones will pop out, I don't know for sure. But the advent ones, like Apocalypse and Phoenix, you'll ev eventually see a repeat, and then we'll be able to go after them again. But the ones that's like Jorgermonger and um Jorgermonger and um I think Yggdrasil was one of them. They weren't from Advent events, they were from raid events, so you're good luck getting them. But they all have a multitude of different stuff, and some of them are good, some of them are bad. Others are in between. Ones that I definitely say is bad is like Typhon and Medusa. Somewhat good would be, um, like, Jorgamonger, who's a, another one. Maybe Sandalfon, because she does attack and HP. Rahab, not good as a main, but good as a sub. And only for certain cases. And then Ixia, the same case as Rahab. Good as a sub, but only for certain cases. But the ones that would definitely stand out and be very, very good would definitely be ones like, um... Like Garuda, Phoenix, Apocalypse, Jack Frost. That's the whole thing with them. I know, um, Ming Huo is dependent. Very, very dependent. She's very good for when you're just starting out, but she's crap later down the line and just supplements a sub slot. Her, her stats are even built for a sub slot too because she got a lot of attack power. I could say the same crap for Sphinx, but, um, that's the whole thing with those. Wait, they call her Spirit Total here, but her name's actually Reki. Just like they call her Mercy, but she's actually Huki down here. Huki's good as a sub, Reki's good as a main. And then, I'm about to see if Oliankas is different. Tiamat was very good. Now, this one, Sakura Mikura, we were, we were supposed to get a crossover event, but we never got it because I don't think Nutaku has the rights for it. DMM does. But Nutaku does it. So, that's probably the reason why we skipped that event. It was going to be a white one. We were going to get this Adon right here. And what she would have done was um, increase HP of everyone, but also increase their combo rate. That may have been good, but I'm not sure. Her HP is insane. But her attack power is crap. Her attack power doesn't even crack 1,000, unfortunately. 
I'm kind of mad we didn't get an event either because there's an SSR character that was going to be limited, but she was a very powerful one for Light, I do believe. Light or Thunder, one of the two. But yeah, Ilyunkus, she's definitely the first one to do it. When we sip and, and have the Ilyunkus event, which is honestly next. Amaru, that's the one I was trying to think of who I, who I couldn't um, take on on normal element. But um, the Ilyunkus event, which is going to end up being next. This is going to be the first time we get an event of Dolan where it works just like the later versions of the um, huge elemental boost at Dolan's. You gotta get a lot of water at Dolan's in order to sip and do this. And if you've been doing events, you should have enough, if not near enough. So that's where you might want to keep your the other ones like your Rahabs and your um I call her the Dragon Lolly, but um she's known as Veretra. But you want to keep them. You want to keep Tiamat. You want to keep um you definitely want to keep Tiamat. You want to keep Reki, Jack Frost. Like if you've been in the game for a long time and then suddenly come across Ilyunkus is like okay I need water element stuff. That's where you really want to get that one. If you really do have to go out of your way and get R and SR at Dolan's, then please get the ones that can still help you out when you summon them, at the very least. Like, say, for instance, there is a, um, there is a water at Dolan, I do believe, in the gotcha, where she reduces the enemy's defense. She'll be great with Ilyankas as a sub slot. Like, Ilyankas be the main and that at Dolan as a sub. But that's the whole thing. We're starting to get at Dolan's that will do that type of stuff. And then there's some that will have some really interesting effects, too. Like, there's some that will do some extremely interesting stuff. We'll eventually get another um, Koihime crossover. We'll eventually get Vlad, who's going to end up being a, um, a Phantom Element. Like, see, she gets drop rate. She'll be one of the few um, at Dolan's in the game that gets drop rate. She has everybody attack power increase too, but they're, um, actually no, she's actually pretty good. Attack power increase for everybody, but also drop right up. She's actually pretty good for that. I'll admit, she's good. I'm glad I went down and looked for her. But there's going to be lots and lots and lots of uh, event stuff. But keep in mind, I stopped at Ilyunkus, but the DMM side's gone way further. And then on top of that, there's a special attack thing they're starting to focus on as well. From some of the later ones, I've noticed. So, yeah, that'll be interesting. But, I will say right out the bat, that the gacha ones are definitely better than the event ones. That's, that's without contest. Their stats even go much higher, usually. I mean, let's face it, we got the Dragoons going to 900 HP and over 3,000 attack power. That is insane. And then plus 99 them is almost like 1,000 HP. And almost like 3,400 attack. Well, it's way past 3,400 actually. That's... I forgot. You get 3 points for attack. But, yeah, when it comes to gacha Dolan's, a lot of them are definitely good to aim for. To be quite honest, if you want the most optimal Idolan setup, you will have to get one of these huge attack power increase Idolan's. Like, say for instance for your fire team, you will have to get Belial. You'll have to get her four tabs so she gives you 120%. Then you'll have to get this Kaiser Dragoon six times. I mean, not six, um, five times. And then on top of that, break limit all of them as far as possible. If you really want the most optimal team for something like that, then yeah. Because she'll, she'll give you attack and defensive buffs. Belial will give you an attack buff. You get a huge boost from all of them. That's the most optimal team, supposedly, for fire. Until they eventually introduce more add-ons. But, as you can already see, you'll have to do a ton of gacha pulling. You'll have to get 26, count them, 26 SSR add-ons that are also harder to pull than normal. I think their rates are decreased compared to the others. But... That's the whole thing with that. So, again, you probably will want some event add ons as well. But if you want to go optimal, you will have to grind the crap out of the gacha. And that means throwing a lot of money at the game. 
personally, I say do both. Do the event and throw money at the gacha. You'll probably luck out and get something good while you still build up your elemental teams. Because a lot of these are still good. And then, like I said, the Dragoons are also pretty good for SR as well. You just don't want to stop at SR. And then, I'm going to see if I can find her. Yeah. Yamato no Orochi. She, um... She's the one that lowers the defense power. She's the SR of water, the one that lowers defense power. Okay, that's who I was thinking of. I was using her when I was just starting off, and she was actually pretty good for the time being. But, anyways, that's all I got for this, guys. Again, for the love of God, please stop putting the, uh, the Willem Adolans as a weed. Get them out of your weeds. Because, I cannot stress this enough. There is so much more you could probably get compared to the Loams that is better. I would go so far as to say that some of the R, R Adolans are probably better than the Loams. If you really have to go out of your way to put a Loam as a main, you really need to rethink your options. I'm not even kidding on that one, because you're probably shortchanging yourself somewhere. And if you do have to use a Loam, use a Phantom one, if anything. But... Anyways, that's all I got for this, guys. I'm going to do another one on accessories once I do some research, so that might take a minute. Because I don't fully know what the best abilities are to go for for the accessories, but I can give you an in insight on what they are at the very least. But I'd rather know some more research about that one. But accessories is definitely going to be the next one. I'm not even going to get to Kamihime because of the fact that Kamihime is more or less, pick the ones that best suit your playstyle. Hopefully they'll still de buff and debuff on top of that, because that's main priority. But, that's the whole thing with that. Anyways, that's all I got for this video, guys. It's gone on for long enough, and I'm kind of, like, dry as the rope, because I had to re-record this from Phil Records a few times. But, anyways, that's all I got for this, guys. Take care.